Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today, we're continuing our analysis of the Van Buren documents with design document number 11, which covers the mining town known as Burham Springs. Burham Springs was intended to be one of the less ambitious locations in the game, essentially serving as a glorified dungeon crawl. It was designed to present the player with a series of obstacles, skill challenges, and combat encounters that the document estimated could be completed in roughly two to four hours. It's interesting to note that the document treats the location as being purely optional, but comments from one of the game's developers imply that there were plans to hide an important plot device somewhere in Burham Springs. The document does a good job of presenting the overall plans for the area, but like many of the other documents, it skimps on many of the finer details. It includes an extensive section focused on the area's backstory, as well as potential links to locations such as Hoover Dam, Maxon Bunker, and New Canaan, but at least some of this information was already outdated, referring to portions of the game that had been cut during development. According to the lore, Burham Springs began as a small town called Eagle Rock. It was founded in 2039 by Prometheus Coal, a division of Poseidon Energy, to house the miners for a nearby coal mining operation. Dangerous and inefficient, the operation was officially shut down in 2066, with both the mine and the town being sold to the United States government. The government instead opted to use the mine as a dumping ground for radioactive waste, with Poseidon Energy providing the equipment and manpower for the new operation. By 2074, the Agricola Disposal Facility was fully operational. When the bombs fell in 2077, two scientists survived in the bunker-like facility beneath Eagle Rock. The first scientist died of natural illness in 2081, and the other scientist killed himself with a knife one year later. After that, the town sat empty for the next 161 years. In 2238, the New California Republic discovered Eagle Rock, and by 2239 they had reopened the old coal mine. Thanks to the NCR's eastward expansion, coal was in high demand and the town prospered until the new rail lines were completed in 2245. With civil unrest brewing back in California, the NCR military withdrew from the region. Many of the townsfolk stayed behind because they were former criminals or integrated tribals who had no future back in NCR territory. The area was soon plagued with powder gangs, former NCR railway workers who had turned to crime to survive. One particular group of powder gangers began preying on travelers between Burham Springs and Hoover Dam, eventually drawing the NCR's wrath after killing several important NCR politicians. In 2247, the NCR 5th Engineering Division, led by Major Robert Border Briggs, pursued the powder gang into Burham Springs. The gangers entrenched themselves in the old coal mine, and when the NCR attempted to blast them out, it ended up setting off the gang's supply of explosives. This partially collapsed the mine and ignited the underground coal veins, setting most of the town ablaze. Flooded with fire and toxic fumes, almost everyone inside the mine was killed, but the strange combination of toxic waste and environmental factors transformed at least two dozen of them into strange new mutants known as the Gehenna. Between the fire, the fumes, and the mutants, the town was soon abandoned. One year later, a group of twelve brave scavengers moved into the abandoned town to start salvaging the old equipment. Over the next two years, all but three of them died, and by 2250, the remaining scavengers rigged the entire town with traps to help defend it. This allowed them to fend off three attacks from the local tribes, and helped to set the stage for the player's arrival in 2253. Burham Springs was broken up into three sub-locations, the town itself, as well as the upper and lower levels of the partially collapsed Burham Mine. The town itself didn't have much to offer. The vast majority of the buildings had been partially or completely destroyed in the fires. The only two surviving buildings had been claimed by the salvagers. We'll get to them in just a moment. The player would need to exercise extreme caution while exploring Burham Springs. Not only had the salvagers set up traps and explosives, but the player would also encounter mutant geckos near the edge of town and if they strayed too close to the mine, then they would end up encountering some of the Gehenna as well, 
After spending five years surviving in Burham Springs, all three of the salvagers were dangerously paranoid. As a result, they wouldn't be particularly eager to interact with the player. While they wouldn't attack on sight, any signs of aggression from the player would almost certainly lead to a fight. It was likely that the player would first encounter Phil and Sparky, both of whom were former railway workers for the NCR. When work on the railway concluded, Sparky turned his demolitions expertise towards making explosives for the powder gangs, and Phil turned his focus towards working as a bounty hunter, making a living by hunting down his former comrades. This is actually how Phil and Sparky first met. Sparky was a member of the powder gang that hid out in the Burham mine. While he did survive the cataclysmic blast that decimated the town, he didn't get away unscathed. Sparky was almost completely deafened and suffered some lingering trauma from the blast, but he's still just coherent enough to be useful to Phil. When first encountered, Phil would fire off a warning shot with his pump-action shotgun, loudly ordering the player to put away their weapons. If the player was traveling with the hanged man, then the confrontation would almost certainly result in combat. But if the player cooperated with Phil's demands, then they would be able to trade with him and even acquire a minor quest. The third member of the group was the ghoul, Frank LaFrancis, who was quite possibly the most paranoid and antisocial member of the salvaging team. Frank didn't trust anyone, not even the other salvagers, though he would still come to their aid if a fight broke out. He would be willing to trade with the player out of necessity, but he would also have notably higher prices than Phil. Frank was very dangerous, armed with a laser rifle and a 45 caliber submachine gun, as well as an assortment of detonators linked to the explosives that were scattered all over town. In the event of an attack, he would use these explosives to efficiently kill off intruders, and he would only be willing to interact with the player while inside of his well-secured shop, which was also lined with explosive charges. Although the salvagers would be suspicious and even borderline hostile towards the player, they would be able to offer both goods and quests. It was theoretically possible to get on their good side by completing their quests and making their lives a little easier, which would also have the side effect of making it a little easier for the player to explore the Burham Mine. Speaking of the mine, we should probably take a moment to talk about the town's other inhabitants the unfortunate people who were horribly mutated into the mindless creatures that are now known as the Gehenna. The Gehenna were large, vaguely human-shaped mutants with skin that appeared to be made of black tar and shiny oil. Their eyes were bulbous, glowing orange spheres, and they appeared to primarily track prey by movement, meaning the player could theoretically hide from them by simply holding still. In combat, the Gehenna possessed fiery melee attacks, as well as the ability to expel toxic fumes onto their foes, and if killed, a Gehenna would collapse into a shapeless pile of smoking black goo. The most heavily irradiated of the Gehenna had further transformed into even more dangerous mutants known as Molex. These creatures were larger and less human than the other Gehenna, lacking arms but instead possessing a long, serpentine neck that ended with a huge fanged maw. Although they lacked any obvious eyes, they were much more likely to spot immobile creatures. Their bodies were covered with strange green orbs that may have been sensory organs, but these orbs also doubled as their primary means of attack. In combat, the Molech would make vicious biting attacks while also using those green orbs to spray targets with a toxic bile. These were intended to be extremely dangerous opponents, made even more dangerous by the environmental threats posed by hazards such as the coal fires, toxic fumes, and radioactive waste. There were a total of 18 Gehenna and 6 Molex, and due to their unique nature, they would not respawn if the player actually managed to kill them. Aside from the Gehenna, the area was also infested with mutant geckos, and Phil would offer the player a reward if they were willing to help get rid of them. This was a fairly straightforward quest. There were 16 geckos in total, and there were numerous ways for the player to deal with them. Combat-oriented players could simply walk around the perimeter of the town and kill the pests, though they would also have to enter the upper level of the mine to get them all. More subtle players could instead use traps to dispose of the geckos. If the player didn't have enough traps, then they could theoretically convince Phil to let them use his stash of heavy-duty bear traps to get the job done, 
Science-minded players could instead create Poisoned Bait using Phil's Outdoorsman Camp to combine Rad Scorpion Poison and So What Fruit. This bait could be used to quickly wipe out the geckos. Regardless of how the player accomplished the task, Phil would reward them with three sticks of dynamite and several units of explosive chemicals once the quest was complete. The second quest was a little bit more ambitious. Frank LaFrancis would ask the player to repair the old water pump that was meant to drain the toxic waste from the lower levels of the mine. This was theoretically a simple task, but it would require entering the mine, meaning that the player would likely end up having to deal with at least some of the mutants inside. The player would need two replacement parts, a water pump impeller and a water hose, both of which could be acquired in Jericho. If the player had a high enough mechanical skill, then they could skip the replacement parts entirely. Once the impeller had been replaced or repaired, the standing pool of burning water near the mine's entrance would disappear. If the player also repaired or replaced the hose, then the pump would also drain the pool of toxic waste at the bottom of the mine, giving the player access to the old Agricola disposal facility. Once the quest had been completed, Frank would reward the player with a stim pack, a 45 caliber revolver, and several rounds of 45 caliber hollow point ammunition. The only other quests planned for Burham Springs involved other factions that had taken an interest in the location. The simplest of these quests could be obtained from Jeremiah Rigdon, the leader of the Mormons. This quest is a bit odd because it was written before the new Canaan location was cut from the game, but since Jeremiah was still present in the game as the leader of the Mormons near the Jericho desalination plant, it's probably safe to assume that the quest would have still been included in the final version of the game, just with a few minor adjustments. Jeremiah was interested in brokering a trade deal with the salvagers, but he wasn't sure how to approach them safely. This was a purely diplomatic mission, requiring the player to convince both Phil and Frank to allow Mormon traders to enter Burham Springs. If the player could accomplish this task, then they would be rewarded with 1,500 experience points, $500, and a healing kit. Even if the player couldn't convince both Phil and Frank to cooperate, they could still lie to Jeremiah about striking a deal. If they successfully deceived him, then they would receive their reward as normal, but they would subsequently lose reputation with the Mormons after one of their merchants ended up getting shot by the salvagers. The fourth quest planned for Burham Springs involved the Brotherhood of Steel. Given the fact that Burham Springs was built atop the old Agricola disposal facility, it was only natural for the Brotherhood to take an interest in it. This quest is particularly interesting because it's one of the few times the writers made a reference to the player potentially working alongside the Circle of Steel. If the player accepted this quest from the normal Brotherhood, then it would just involve retrieving key pieces of pre-war technology from Burham Mine and then bringing them to Max and Bunker. But if the player was working with the Circle, then they would instead be asked to kill the Salvagers and to collapse the mine with explosive charges. Regardless of which version of the job the player completed, they would ultimately be rewarded with 2,000 experience points and the components needed to build the Hermes Light Armor prototype. The final quest planned for Burham Springs was also the most ambitious. As I mentioned before, Burham Springs was once an NCR mining town, and Lieutenant Governor Dodge over at Hoover Dam was interested in finding a way to once again make the mine operational. In order to restore the mines to a workable condition, the player would need to find a way to drain the toxic waste and put out the coal fires. This meant that the player would first need to repair the water pump so they could then access the old Agricola disposal facility where they could reactivate and reprogram the facility's robots to put out the fires. Unfortunately, unless the player had technical training, then they would require the Agricola fire suppression module. This could only be found in the Grand Canyon, which was intended to be one of the most dangerous locations in the game. If the player had appropriate mechanical or scientific skills, then they could complete this task much more easily. While exploring the Agricola facility, the player would be able to find a hard copy of instructions on how to appropriately modify the Agricola robots. They could then use these instructions to modify the robots with an average mechanic skill check. The player could also get the same results by hacking the facility's central computer with a much harder science skill check. The player would also have to be very careful, 
While the Agricola robots would be dormant when the player first arrived, they would become hostile if they detected any weapons fire inside the lab, and destroying the robots would make it impossible to complete the quest. Once the robots were reprogrammed and reactivated, Burham Springs would be well on its way to recovery. This would allow the player to broker an alliance between the Mormons and Hoover Dam, rewarding the player with 2,500 experience points, $1,000, and a significant boost to their reputation with both factions. Of course, these quests were intended to invite additional complications or conflict with the game's various factions. Restoring Burham Mine would quickly result in the NCR once again claiming the town, which would put the salvagers out of business. Making a deal with either the Mormons or the NCR, but without establishing an alliance between the two, would also result in eventual hostility between the two factions. Likewise, the player would probably end up having to choose between supporting the NCR or the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood would be unhappy if the player left pre-war technology in the NCR's hands, but the player would theoretically be able to keep both sides happy if they used the equipment to restore the mines and then subsequently delivered that equipment to the Brotherhood. If the player was working with the Circle of Steel, then this would be impossible, because their version of the quest involved completely destroying the coal mine. Ultimately, the player's decisions would lead to one of five potential endings. If the player decided to destroy the town, either by collapsing the mine or by hitting the location with a nuke, then the town would continue burning indefinitely. Mutants would emerge from the collapsed mine, preying on travelers and eventually resulting in the area being completely abandoned. The other endings all involved different combinations of alliances and quest resolutions, focused on which factions the player left in charge of the area and whether or not the player restored the mine to working order. Depending on the player's decisions, this could result in the NCR or the Salvagers laying claim to the town, and could theoretically result in conflict between the NCR and the local Mormon community. The most ideal resolution involved restoring the mine to working order and brokering a truce between the NCR and the Mormons. In this case, Burham Springs would become more prosperous than ever before, benefiting both factions tremendously, though the Salvagers would presumably still be displaced. Officially, Burham Springs and its inhabitants have never appeared in any official Fallout game. While certain related elements such as New Canaan and the Powder Gangs were both introduced in Fallout New Vegas, the town of Burham Springs itself is never mentioned. Sadly, that means that Burham Springs is almost certainly not part of the official Fallout continuity, though that could certainly end up changing in the future. That pretty much wraps up our analysis of design document number 11. So next time, we'll be diving into design document number 12, which covers the NCR settlement at Hoover Dam. It's the second largest of the leaked design documents, meaning that it's going to take me a while to put together a proper analysis, so I'd better get to work. But for now, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for listening. Oh, and remember... Although I do love talking about Fallout Van Buren, you can check out most of the leaked documentation for yourself by visiting the fan-run Fallout wikis. Links are in the description.